The Arctic is the fastest warming place on Earth. We're losing not only an ecosystem or the certain diversity of an ecosystem, but we maybe have more and more methane will get to the surface if the permafrost is uh, thawing. And the scientists, we must be here and observe to tell the world what is actually happening. We're looking at ecosystem functions that the plants fulfill. How are they affecting the climate? Is there a positive, negative feedback loop? And I think that's something that's been overlooked in the International Tundra Experiment, we observe how vegetation has changed over time when we apply artificial warming. The experiment is now 22 years old. They are run all over the world. It's always the same principle. We have an open top chamber, an OTC it's called, and it's increasing the temperature in here. I think in summer it's only like half a degree, maybe. There are other locations in the Arctic where you can get one even up to two degrees. It's not that extreme here. But this is already enough, this slight temperature differences that we see that the, the plants are really doing well. It's super green inside, the leaves are larger already, more unfolded. And uh, when I look outside, I don't see a single flower yet. Whereas in here, we're in full flow. We have permafrost everywhere, so the ground is frozen. On top of this permafrost, we have a layer that's called the active layer, and that thaws every summer. So by the end of the season, it's at its deepest. In spring, it starts thawing, and this is when the plants, also the roots, can get active. And of course, it matters if you have just a five centimeter or if you have a lot more space. Permafrost stores a lot of carbon, and now uh, the Arctic is warming almost four times faster than all the other places. And with this warming up, there's of course a lot of permafrost that's also going to thaw. And we see now that this active layer thickness at the end of the season is deeper than before. If there's more thawing, it would mean that there's more carbon available for the microbes and for the vegetation. And then that will influence also the release of the carbon, which again is a greenhouse gas, so uh, could have a negative loop. After 22 years of warming, we can record more plants, so more biomass. At the same time, in the surrounding with outer additional hurling, there's also more green leaves. And that means that the natural climate change that's happening is already uh, pushing all the control plots into a greener area. Over time, we can clearly see a development to a greener tundra. The predictions in the high Arctic where we are now differ a little bit from the low to mid Arctic. In the low to mid Arctic is what we mainly call the Arctic greening is caused by shrubs that maybe they reach uh, they up to knee high, they can even be uh, two or three meters tall, tall shrubs in Alaska. We don't have that on Svalbard. What we do have are grasses and they are expected to be pushed forward. And we have around 400 moss species. This is a very good insulator of the ground. To a certain extent, a greening of the vegetation means also a deeper organic layer, and that's very good for insulation. So that the active layer that's on top of the permafrost, that is not deepening even more. And that would be in favor to protect the frozen ground. In the project Insulate, we are looking at the effects vegetation has on the ground and how they can protect the frozen soil. We have one plot which mostly includes grasses, one that includes grasses and mosses, and one that mostly includes mosses. We measure how deep the permafrost is underneath this plot. You hear, yeah, not so bright sound. And then that means it's uh, touching the permafrost. 30, one and a half centimeters. We really want to compare, does the different vegetation types have a different insulating factor on the permafrost? And then we can see like, okay, if there's more mosses, it's actually better to uh, yeah, insulate the permafrost. What I'm specifically looking at is how different moss species have different effects, which is a better insulator. Uh, we compare it with the vegetation that's normally here, and then seeing how deep the active layer is in the, all those different sites. At this moment uh, in the season, Pagnum is a very well insulator, so the active layer thickness is a lot less deep than for other plots. And then we take one more uh, measurement warehouse, the NDCI. We see with this measurement what the incoming light is, and with this one we see what the reflective light is. So then we can see how green the plants are. So if there's less uh, light reflected, it could also mean that there's more heat going into the soil, which maybe affects the thawing as well.
even if we have this arctic greening and to some point the plants would insulate the ground, this cannot counteract the, the amplification and warming that we're experiencing today. In summer it's getting warmer, it's also getting warmer in winter. And I would even say that the, the winter changes that we're seeing now are even more dramatic. What's happening is that the precipitation that's supposed to fall as snow falls as rain and it creates a nice ice layer. The reindeer can't go through the ice, so they miss their access to the food source. The ice really doesn't contribute much to insulation, if anything. And so plants that are sensitive to uh, cold temperatures, then they die. So these are huge changes. And now we are in a time of when things are changing fast. We also don't know how fast it's changing. There are areas now that were wonderful, with wonderful lichens. The reindeer got there and they've eaten so much that suddenly also the, the ground is really grubbed. And then you can see that protective layer is disturbed of the permafrost and actually permafrost erosion is setting in. And that is something that we see also in other areas of the Arctic, that at some point when it's getting too much destruction and uh, erosion disturption, then we get a, a slump. Then uh, it will thaw drastically. What can we do about it? I mean, we should really reduce emissions, right? But even if we do it now, what's in the air is in the air. But I think there's a lot that can be done in, in when you think about it on a societal level. And up here to us, the scientists, we must try to get this across. Things are changing and they're actually changing drastically.